Hi friends and thank you for clicking on this video. Today's video is going to be pretty special. It's a collab video with a YouTuber Raw Paint blog. Raw Paint blog is amazing and iconic. She was the person who introduced the concept of glass escalator to beauty YouTube and ever since she did that that concept kind of popped up in every conversation regarding beauty gurus, male beauty gurus, or James Charles and him being entitled and how sometimes people can have something easier than other people who are doing the exact same thing and ever since I heard about that I was like plugging that in every conversation I was like uh, yeah but have you heard about a glass escalator? have you? because so that is pretty iconic and I hope even more people see that video because because it's so uh, very important and no one really talks about that before all pain blog but our video today is gonna be brands that don't excite me this is not a new concept of a video also lately there was a tag video by Samantha Samantha March Samantha, Samantha, uh, Samantha March floating around uh, five brands that excite me and five brands that don't but um, we, ha we are having a bit of a different take on the situation we're not talking about the brands that excite us but we have agreed to talk about brands that don't excite us and we did that, we agreed before I personally saw the video by Samantha March and also the way that we're doing it is that we're gonna have a shared section with similar brands and um, and a section of our own but we're starting with the brands that don't excite us and the first brand that I'm gonna talk about is La Rock, which uh, the name originates from uh, the name Carol being spelled backwards so here's a fun fact. So I think Lorac was a huge, hugely popular brand some time ago, years ago, when eyeshadow palettes were just becoming the next big thing, when Urban Decay Naked palettes first came out and they were the first eyeshadow palettes, basically, and they started the craze and what was in is like those huge palettes with um, neutral eyeshadows, mattes and shimmers, a subtle pops of color like um, Naked palettes never had pops of color but Lorac, sh Lorac palettes surely did. I remember like blue blue pans in their palettes. Lorac Pro had the this, this same legendary statues as uh, Naked palettes. But Lorac never um, ships internationally, so you can't really try the products out unless you pay a third party shipping service extra money to ship Lorac or other brands with similar attitude products. So I never had the chance to try out and I guess I would have liked that 10 years ago when that was the thing. But I think after that, Lorac slowly started getting less and less popular. They tried different things, they had different collabs. Like I remember now their collabs with their collab with Pirates of the Caribbean face and eyeshadow palette. But I don't remember that being hugely successful. I remember Kimberly Clark on anti holding them. By the way, I've been re-watching Kimberly Clark and I just need her to come back because those anti-holes are so old. Everything had gone to hell since Kimberly left. But yeah, and now even if I had the chance to try our Lorac products, I wouldn't really want to and I don't want to because it's boring. It's all the same. They have like 50 similar eyeshadow palettes in different shapes and sizes. And I'm like, nah. You had your moment and you lost it. Of course, there can there there is hope. There is hope for any brand. I feel like, but I'm very interested in Lorac because they're a bland, they're boring, they're inaccessible. 
they don't have any color or any any twist to their products nowadays colorful eyeshadows duochromes multichromes are all the rage so brands that don't uh, confirm to those conform to those new trends are gonna fall behind i feel like the second brand that we're gonna talk about is bare minerals so I feel like Bare Minerals is similar to Lorac in terms of they don't have any color, they don't have any twist, it's boring, it um, has that same safe, high-end feeling, so maybe they're marketing a specific target audience that I'm not a part of, everything's possible, but I also want to address that maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like um, mineral makeup, mineral cosmetics actually refers to powder, loose powder products like mineral eyeshadow would be a loose pigment, mineral foundation a loose foundations. So I don't really get it why bare minerals call themselves minerals but they're being the same brand as any other brand with liquid foundations and regular pressed eyeshadows. So I feel like there is no really mineral aspect to it and that leaves me confused but there can be different connotations to the word mineral but mineral makeup is a thing nevertheless and yeah basically I've never wanted to try anything bare minerals N not price wise neither product wise it excites me and the last product from the from the shared section is the brand Glam Glow. Glam Glow and their overpriced mud. First of all, I have to say that there are drugstore mud masks, clay masks that uh, work well. I think my favorite, my favorite clay mask is the one by European brand Hama, which is like um, Dutch IKEA minus the furniture, but they have like everything else, and they have they have their own section of makeup and skincare. But I also want to say I don't know how I don't know how it happens in other countries. Um, I don't know how it is in the U.S. or the West or anything like that. But here, in you can just go to every pharmacy and buy a packet of dry clay that you can mix the uh, mix in with water on your own and make yourself a mud masks and that piece of that um sachet full of full of clay that can last you for half a year of mixing would cost you like 20 cents or 50 cents or a dollar max and you can you can add anything you want like oils um, extracts i don't know your toner perhaps having all those choices i don't see the necessity to use extremely overpriced overpriced clay masks. I do have one, I've never tried it. I have I received it in the Look Fantastic Advent calendar. Haven't used it yet. That calendar was so overpriced and I'm not happy with it. Yeah, so I wouldn't get that product on my own. What I was saying, another aspect to Glam Glow is the gimmicks. They have collabed with Power Rangers and Sonic the Hedgehog, which in my mind doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. And they always do the gimmickiest, the gimmickiest things ever, like those silver or golden peel-off masks masks with glitter that, that destroy the earth thanks glam glam extremely overpriced moisturizer cleansers another thing that i want to say is that i feel like glam glow is the brand that heavily relies on social media and influencers that push it i remember when that brand appeared it was very hyped and uh, you, it had the it had the agenda of like all the Hollywood stars are secretly using this those magical mud masks these are Hollywood masks and I mean I I have 
I am yet to try the one that I have, this purple thing, Gravity Mod. Um, but I mean, it's clay. It's not worth it, even if it really has some good beneficial effects, but like, you're a gimmicky and you're overpriced and you're just clay. Now we're off to the individual section of the products brands that will excite us. And the first brand that I want to talk about is Urban Decay. I've never had anything by Urban Decay. I remember years ago I had the money and uh, before the colorful palettes and before the eyeshadow palettes were really accessible, I walked into a store when Urban Decay just came into Russia and they started having pop-up stores that they have had for years now and I just like I swatched the naked palette and I could buy it but I just didn't because it's so boring and there are so many more shimmers than mattes and it's just a nude brown palette I have that million of times in my eyeshadow collection and I feel like Urban Decay was once this edgy brand who had a freaking Pulp Fiction collection how cool is that they had the color originally they were edgy they were creative the name isn't even edgy and it attracted people but now but now it's like a u-turn they're hopping on trends way later than the trends appear like urban decay heat was way later than when then than when the orange trend started urban decay naked cherry is still very late to the party not interested personally they have had momentum with the urban decay game of thrones collection but i feel like it's poorly executed based on the color selection and uh, color combos the flat lay of the layout of the products even even though so even though some of the products were pretty nice they're still not really tempting and that's not enough and another brand that i'm going to talk about is opv beauty opv beauty is an indie brand that is available on beauty bay so i want to say that when i saw this brand i was like this brand looks a lot like Juvia's Place, they share a lot of same aesthetic, the color selection and the palette format is pretty similar, but also one of their latest releases is actually like 90% deep of Urban Decay Burn to Run, and if you're dipping such a boring brand as Urban Decay, you're even more boring. I feel like this brand lacks what makes an indie brand appealing, this brand lacks what make what can make a person crave a product by an indie brand i don't see any creativity or uniqueness i feel like this brand is on beauty bay which is amazing and makes it accessible to a very wide audience so i feel like this brand should take advantage of that and and, sp and aspire to be more instead of being like oh this is like juvia's place or, oh, this is like Urban Decay. Be the brand that people that people would talk about, like, oh, this is OPV Beauty. You need to be unique and have this, this brand awareness. And um, I mean, not brand awareness, you need to have this, you need to have your own branding. You need to have something that people would look and see, oh, this is OPV Beauty. This is not Juvia's, this is not, any other brand this is you and this brand likes that likes creativity but it's an aspiring brand so I think they have a lot of hope they have they still have hope but I don't find the aesthetic the color selection the layout in the palettes anything unique 
Another brand that does not excite me is Hourglass. Yes, yeah, it's, it's this bougie, expensive, or priced brand of shimmery highlighters, shimmery powders, shimmery blushes, shimmery bronzers. First of all, um, I have to say that I may be wrong, but and I'm a drugstore how and a broke person but i don't feel the necessity to go high end for a blush or a bronzer if i had the money to spend that's not the area where i would spend it i feel like and i have a translucent loose powder by shop miss a and it's glowy and it it gives you such a dewy glowing from within effect for one dollar but it gives you all that effect for that price i wouldn't feel the need to spend 40 dollars on whatever whatever hourglass offers and i feel like the the the, the price is way more than 40 dollars they also have those like limited edition palettes that all look the same they all look identical yet people are always like this limited edition palette this out of stock is great but while their regular collection is bad i can't keep up with that i know that they also have a lot of face products lip products but i know this is a high-end brand it's not even meant for someone like me i feel like but i'm not i'm just not interested at this point i'm just at this point i'm ready to spend money where um money at indie products i'm ready to be more for a multi-chrome or or a unique duochrome shade or a collection that inspired by something that inspires me to you and i know that indie indie brands have to do more to succeed than regular than a regular brand and i just don't have the taste for high-end makeup i'm not saying hourglass is bad quality i'm sure it's great quality but i don't see the appeal at all i have a ton of shimmery blushes and drugstore blushes highlighter highlighters and bronzers completely satisfy me and the last seventh brand that does not excite me is milk makeup first of all i gotta say that at first i didn't even didn't even see the difference between malt cosmetics and milk makeup i didn't even know which was which product was by which brand uh, their aesthetics kind of mashed up in my head so and their names of course are very similar and i feel like they popped up at the same time so that's a bit confusing but they are different Malt Cosmetics is a indier brand in in terms of comparison of those two, and Milk Makeup is the brand that that a beauty glossy magazine editor founded. I feel like Milk Makeup is another one of those inaccessible brands. It came to Cult Beauty last year, but it, it's only available for the UK customers of Cult Beauty, even though Cult Beauty delivers through Europe more or less, even though they don't really accept Russian cards anymore unless you're paying with iTunes. But I've never shopped from Cult Beauty because I'm not a because I'm not a high-end junkie. Milk Makeup is the brand that had those stick toners, stick bronzers, and I don't I don't reach for cream products a lot. The only cream products I use are cream highlighters yet i still use them very rarely i feel like cream product honestly is just um extra step because because if you just use cream products you will still want to set them out with their powder antagonists so and that to me is just extra work because i don't see how you would put all cream products on your face and not fix them with anything i don't have the oiliest skin the the oiliest skin ever but still especially if you have the need to like always 
rub your face like this I don't feel like cream products are the choice to go unless again you cover them with a powder product with a powder product of the same category as the cream product is in I understand the appeal of milk makeup's aesthetic it's something clean like clean fancy minimalistic but somehow quirky that's how I would define their aesthetic still not something like ah. and so I have to add that I haven't had anything by the brand by the brands that I have listed except for this little thing that I haven't tried yet because I'm still going through the milk through clay masks that I have in my stash and milk not milk and clay masks take me um take me a long time to use up about as long as makeup I feel like I have had um Queen Halop mint julep mask for two years and it's still super super full it's still performing well also I feel like neither of us has mentioned Tarte even though Tarte is kind of the most obvious choice when it comes to the brands that don't excite me but I have to to say that I feel like after Tarte Cosmetics Shape Tape drama Tarte kind of um, did their best to to fix their mistakes and they came out with the shades later with the shades later and they they're not the most hated brand anymore even though they are considered to be one of the most boring ones but i have to say that Tarte is very um Tarte, uh, is accessible to shoppers worldwide their website delivers internationally and their website even has the version the versions of it in different languages like it translates to your your language on on its own and i feel like it's very smart because not especially in my country not all the shoppers um speak the the um the perfect english to choose what they would like to buy so i'll upload that and because of that i always give tart the slightest bit of a chance of a chance to come out with something that would potentially interest me and because i know i would be able to buy that but i'm an i'm an annoyed boy so tart kind of missed their chance to wow me and get my coin but they have the chance to do that in the future i think tart has some interesting products like shape tape or concealer why 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 do i say concealer the way laura lee says it concealer that's how she says it i feel like and concealer is the way you're supposed to say it not sure but whatever and i feel like their tartest pro eyeshadow palette is a good color selection for that time when it came out and it's more or less more or less different because it has it has reddish tones and warm tones but it also has that one duochrome i had been eyeing that palette before i went on an old buy but it kind of lo lost the chance for it to shine but yeah that was all for today hopefully you enjoyed this video i'm very excited to see raw paint vlogs video on this topic please go to raw paint blog and subscribe to her and check out her content because that content is very needed it is what is needed right now in beauty in the beauty community a lot of points she brings up really made me think about them i love that she's able to see the connections between the beauty community beauty gurus makeup and and some institutional so social issues and that's what makes her content unique yeah i hope everyone goes and checks raw paint blog out 
and subscribes to her. But thank you very much for watching this video. Tell us what brands don't excite you in the comments down below.